Um, my full name is Dai Trang Li. Uh, in actual fact, in Vietnamese, is Le Thi Trang Dai. Uh, and uh, I was born in Saigon, Vietnam. Can you tell us when you migrated to Australia and how old you were at the time? It's an interesting question because I don't see myself as migrating over to Australia. So I, um, we arrived here uh, from Hong Kong camps, refugee camps, uh, and so we got flown over because we were obviously the, well, we were the first um, exodus, the, the first group of Vietnamese refugee exodus after the fall of Saigon in April 75. So for about three to four years, we spent life in refugee camps in Southeast Asia. Uh, and we were accepted for resettlement um, in uh, December 1979. So we arrived here, uh, got taken to uh, Ferry Meadow Hostel down at the south coast. Um, and um, yeah, my, 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 my mother and my two younger sisters, I'm the eldest of the, in the family. Can you share with us the reasons for um, having to move away from home? What was the situation like in Vietnam at the time? Um, so the Vietnam War ended in April 75. Um, people call it the American War. Um, you know, people say it's Saigon fell. So there are various uh, interpretations throughout the history of the war in Vietnam. Um, so for me, it's as I see it as the Viet the war in Vietnam or the Vietnam War. And um, like many um, Vietnamese refugees who fled Vietnam at the end of 75. It's when the communists took over the South. Um, and so families like mine fled um, in you know, the chaos of you know, the country or the, the, the city f uh, falling into the hands of communists. Um, communism. So we escaped by boat. Um, and um, you know, like I'm sure you know, you've heard the stories before of the boat journey. So we were part of that boat journey, or the, the um, yeah, and fled Vietnam, and the boat journey. I mean, I, I could. Do you want me to go into the details of the boat journey? Do you want to share? Uh, so that at, when Saigon fell towards the end of April, um, not many um, people knew about the fall of Saigon, or not pe not many people were prepared for Saigon to fall including my family. So we were carrying on our daily lives. So I was tr um, riding my tricycle uh, in the front of our house and suddenly out of nowhere, military dressed men uh, arrived, got to our house and then dragged myself, my family, my mum, my sisters and bundled us up into a Jeep. Um, and in that Jeep, um, you know, there were other people, strangers in that Jeep know, mainly women and their children. Um, they were crying and that Jeep took us to a, a port. Um, and I remember as we were, as that Jeep was moving through the streets of Saigon, there were people running with um, bags in their hands or just running, people um, crying, um, lots of noises. It was cha chaotic. Um, for me, I was seven years of age, so it was quite confusing because obviously one moment I was sitting there um, riding my tricycle, next minute um, I'm surrounded by a lot of people running and screaming and crying. So we were on this, um, put onto this boat. Um, I scrambled to get onto, onto, this, uh, onto this boat. Um, it, felt, it felt like there were thousands of people, but I'm sure there's probably about, uh, you know, a few hundred, but it felt like um, the whole city um, were rushing to get onto this boat. Um, and we were taken to um, um, the Philippines um, and we were supposed to be resettled, um, taken to the United States. A lot of um, families in Vietnam, uh, including mine, were closely linked with um, the Americans. Um, so, so, so a lot of us, a lot of the families were then taken out of Vietnam and taken to be resettled in the United States of America. So we were supposed to wait for my father in the Philippines to, um, to, to come and then we'll go, supposedly go to the United States together. That's the story that was told to me. 
Um, but we waited for a few years and he never turned up. Um, and lots of families, um, you know, were waiting for their um, fathers, uncles, but, you know, um, because of, obviously because of the war, they never made it. So we, um, and then one night my mother decided to bundle the three of us again and um, jumped onto a smaller boat with about 30 something people. So the boat, with about, there were about 36 Vietnamese refugees. And we, again, okay, by that stage, I think I was 10, had no idea, again, you know, where we were heading to, what, what was happening. Obviously, we've been living in limbo over the last few years um, in displaced people camps, um, as they were called. Uh, had no proper education. Uh, so, uh, you know, one night, like I said, my mother took us out onto this um, beach, um, sat there, we were supposed to have a picnic. Um, the picnic in the daytime turned into a nighttime sitting there near some sort of um, bonfire and waiting. Uh, and then in the middle of the night, a bundle of people, including us, started to go towards this huge piece, this rock, and behind that rock was a small boat, and we were asked to get into this boat. So, um, being a child, you follow your, um, instru you follow instructions, uh, get onto that boat, it was, I was so tired because we were sitting there all day, and I had to walk through the cold waters to get into this boat, so I was kind of really tired, I remember. Got into that boat and just fell asleep. And the next morning when I woke up, the boat was in the middle of the ocean. So I just saw the sky and the ocean and that was it and just our boat. Um, didn't know what was happening um, and just, um, you know, just sat there waiting to obviously to, to just followed. <laughs> and I just was thinking, where are we going? Where were we going? What, what was happening? Um, this is the second time that we left everything behind. Not that we had much behind, but uh, there were uncertainties again for me. Then I thought, well, um, wherever we're heading, hopefully it'll be, that will be the final destination. That will be the final destination. So we encountered a huge storm um, a few nights later, huge, huge huge storm and we thought or I thought we were going to die because none of I couldn't swim the boat was just like rocking so hard um, my mother said hold on to this plastic canister and hold on to your sister which is my middle sister and she'll hold on to my younger sister so if the boat tipped over that I must hold on to my sister and hold on to this canister and we will you know uh, find each other I remember I looked out into the, like you could not see, it was so pitch black, you couldn't see anything. I thought, how the hell, I didn't say that, but I thought, how am I gonna find, how are we gonna find each other in this? And I was, at that moment, um, there was huge fear of the darkness, um, huge fear of the water because we couldn't swim. But then the realization that maybe we were gonna die anyway so um, my, my mother, we were Catholics, and my mother was praying a lot. So she was praying to the Blessed Virgin Mary. And um, as Catholics, you knew that your life was it. Your, your, your life was in God's hand. So that fear then got um, translated to, well, it's in God's hands now. If, I, if we're to survive this, it's going to be God. And the Blessed Virgin Mary will look after us. If they take us, and that's meant to be. We're going up to heaven. Um, so I, I just remember the boat just constantly hitting and hitting the water so hard. And I remember my face almost touching the water as well. That's how it was. And just closed my eyes and just, you know, just said, well, you know, I'll, I'll leave it in God's hands. And um, the next morning, we 
miraculously survive that that storm, um, and then we um, set continue to set sail. And my mother prayed a lot and thanked God a lot. But of course, the people on the boat who were Buddhists <laughs> turned to us and said, "You know, stop doing that. You brought, you know, you cause all this chaos to stop." Because they felt that, um, you know, we were the only Catholics on that boat, so um, they felt that we were contributing to the whole uh, natural disaster. Um, we encountered f a further two two incidents that also almost cost us our lives again. The last one was the the pirates jumping on our boats, boat, and um, but we survived that. So finally, um, a Hong Kong patrol boat saw us and, 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 and pulled us into Hong Kong, and I felt so relieved. I felt so relieved that we finally not in the middle of the ocean and not encountering another, um, you know, life-threatening situation, and um, I remember it being the boat being pulled in, and I thought, oh, finally, I'm going to land. But as the boat was being pulled in, I looked out across um, where they were pulling us in, and I saw thousands of boats like us. I thought, oh, my God. I just couldn't believe it. That means there's no way we're going to get on, on land because there are all these other boats there before us. So this was in 70 beginning of 79 or mid-79, I can't remember when. But that's that's the first, um, obviously, the escape of the Vietnamese refugees. That's the first um, exodus. So lots were escaping by the end of 79. So, um, so we then got, you know, we waited for hours before they all kind of took us onto, on, on land and gave us all a number. And uh, we were taken into this huge warehouse, humongous warehouse. Just, co I remember walking into this um, kind of, kind of nothing, uh, nothing in that warehouse other than the roof and uh, the poles holding the, the 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 roof up. And we were told to look for a spot, and it was concrete. Um, and they all gave us a, um, we had to pick up a mat, a straw mat each, and a blanket each. Um, so we kind of were given each a mattress, uh, a, a straw mattress and a, a blanket and a bowl, a, 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 an aluminium bowl per family. Family four taken there, and I c felt so glad to finally set foot on land and it wasn't moving, um, place our mat, on the ground and just fell asleep, um, and there are the, the refugees were just, you know, streaming in like the floors were just full of people. And we just you know lie on the floor and slept, and we um, stayed there for a few months, and then they transferred us to different camps, um, and eventually we ended up in what they call freedom camp, and that's where once you, um, you know, were accepted to be resettled into um, a, 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 a first world country. Um, and so my family uh, ex were accepted to be resettled into to America, but then my mother decided not to go to America and she decided to um, reapply and to choose. And she said, she said to me, she said, there's an island, uh, a big island with the best education system in the world. I've decided not to go to America. I believe this is the best place for you girls to grow up and have a good education. And it's far away from everything. It is an island. So that island happened to be Australia. Thank you so much for sharing. Just quickly, can you um, tell us who owned the photographs and why you brought them today? Um, so these photos are some of the remnants of when we escaped Vietnam. My mother didn't take much. I don't think she took anything. We didn't even take clothes because we didn't have time. But she managed to grab some of the photos um, that we had. So these are some photos of me in Vietnam with my cousin. And at the bottom here, um, I love this photo. It's of my great grandmother at her place, and that's me and my younger sister and my cousin. Um, and that's me um, in Vietnam. That's probably about a um, six a year before we escaped Vietnam and this is in the zoo 
um, family visits in the zoo and this again this is myself and my sister so yeah this is back in the you know early 70s I'm, I assume but that's me and um, yeah one last question why do you think it's important to share your story with a broader audience um, I think that um, I think storytelling is a really powerful tool to get people to connect with one another and I think to understand um, the other person's uh, background, where they come from, I think will allow people to connect with each other at a human level. Um, and I think the refugee story is quite important because um, the adversities that that refugees have had to have gone through to rebuild their lives. Um, I think gives people a perspective of the character of that person um, and the journey that you've made, what you've survived, what you've overcome, I believe um, sets you up to be a really productive citizen because you know that you don't, you can't take anything for granted, that you know that um, you have survived a treacherous journey, you've, su you've survived almost death for some people um, and therefore this is a second chance in life. And so it's important, first of all, it's important for a, pe a person like myself to share because so that people know why I'm motivated to do certain things and why I do what I do. It's because of who I have been. So yeah. <laughs>